grace and power stay beside me every hour be my drink be my living bread keep me sheltered keep me fed holy spirit holy spirit dwell in me Holy Spirit, comfort me and let my heart be one with thee. And when I'm worried, soothe my mind. Let me sweet contentment find. Let me I run this wicked race. Yes, filled by your amazing grace. Oh, Holy Spirit. Yes, Holy Spirit, comfort me, comfort me, and Holy Spirit, rescue me. Yes, set my soul completely free. Yes, beside Jordan, make my bed. Yes, in God's bosom, lay my head. Let me live in a brand new place. Yes, see my blessed Savior's face. Oh, Holy Spirit, yes, Holy Spirit, yes, rescue me, rescue me. Amen. All night, I'm singing all day. You know the angels watching over me. My Lord, I'm singing all night. I'm singing all day. The angels watching over me, singing for me all night. Night. I'm singing all day. You know the angels watching over me. My oh, we're singing all night. We're singing all day. Yes, the angels are watching over me. Well, Lord, I went to the church house where I used to pray. You know the angels watch over over me my oh my soul got so happy that i stayed all the day you know the angels watch oh sing it for me all night yes we're singing all the day you know the angels are watching over me my oh we're singing all night we're singing all all the angels watching over me well uh, amazing grace how sweet does the sound you know the angels are watching over me my oh who i once was so lost thank god that now i am found to know the angels oh, oh keep on singing for me all night we're singing all through the day you know the angels are watching over me my oh we're singing all day and all night and all day and all night whilst the angels oh one more time sing it all night yes we're singing all through the day you know the angels they're watching me my lord all night yes we're singing all the day you know the angels will watch over me amen
Can Brother Johnson sing one? <laughs> I think we need one. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my blessing. I'm patiently wait, patiently waiting for the harvest, for the harvest is a night. And I got the Hebrews 11 and 1, and of faith to know that, that my blessing shall, because it's mine, it's mine, all oh mine. It's harvest time, it's not. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my blessing, I'm patiently waiting, yeah, oh, oh, for the harvest, the harvest is nigh, and I got the Hebrews 11 and 1, and I'll faith to know that, that my blessing shall, cause it's my mine it's all mine oh lord it's hard well i believe in him for great things oh he promised me a long time ago and, and i know that i'm going to get it because the Bible, it tells me so. I thank the Father for his good blessings. Yeah, for his kingdom. And it's mine. It's mine. All oh, mine. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. Well, I come. I've come to receive, yeah, my blessing. I'm patiently waiting, oh, oh, for the harvest, the harvest is nigh. And I got the Hebrews 11 and 1, and the faith to know that, that my blessing shall, cause it's mine, it's all mine. It's harvest time, it's all well. I believe in him for great things. Oh, he promised me a long time ago. And, and I know that I'm going to get it well because the Bible, it tells me so. I thank the Father for his good blessings, yeah, for his kingdom, and it's a mine, it's a mine, all oh, mine, oh Lord, yeah, oh, oh Lord, I've come, I've come to receive, to receive my Sit up patiently waiting, yeah, for the harvest. Here's a, oh, when I got the Hebrews, 11 and 1, and the faith to know that my blessing shall, cause it's mine, well, mine. It's harvest time, it's hard. Well, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get mine. Going to get it, get it, going to. I'm going to get mine. Oh, I'm going to get mine. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get mine. Well, because it's mine. Oh, mine. Come on, church. Yes, sing it like you mean it. Oh, Lord. Say it, I come to receive. A Bible said, I'm patiently waiting. Yeah, for the harvest. It is mine. I got the Hebrews 11 and 1. And I think to know that my blessing shall, cause it's mine. Whoa, oh my. It's harvest time. It's all well. I 
of my blessing. Oh, you got to believe it. Oh, send my blessing. Yes, it is. Oh, and my blessing. Yeah. Oh, because it's mine. Oh, mine. It's harvest time. Oh, say it. Oh, oh, Lord. Oh, I come to receive my blessing. I'm patiently waiting. Oh, for the harvest is not. And I got the Hebrew 11 and 1 and a faith to know that my blessing shall cause it's mine. Oh, mine, cause it's mine. Oh, mine, it's mine. Oh, mine, it's harvest time. It's harvest time. Time. I really love the Lord. Oh, I really love the You don't know what he's done for me. And he gave me the victory. And that's why I love, that's why I love him. Yes, I, I really love the Lord. Sing, I really love the Lord. I, I really love the Lord. Sing, oh, oh, I, I really love the Lord. Oh, when you just don't know, you don't know what He's done for me. He gave me. Oh, and that's why I love, that's why I love him. Yes, I, I really love the Lord. Said he's been a friend to me. He, he's been a friend to, to me. Yes, he has. Oh, oh, he, he's been a friend to me. Oh, and you don't know, you don't know what he's done for me. He gave me the victor. Oh, and that's why I, I love you, Lord. I I love you, Lord, and I, I really love the Lord. Said he's heard my humble cry. He, he's heard my humble oh, cry. Yes, he has. Oh, oh he heard my humble oh cry oh when you don't know you don't know what he's done for me he gave me victor oh and that's why i i love you lord i oh i love you lord and i I really love the Lord. Sing, I really love the Lord. I, I really love the Lord. Sing, oh, oh I, I really love the Lord. Oh, know you don't know what he's done for 
of me on Calvary. Victory, and that's why I, I love you, Lord. I, I love you, Lord, and I, I really, I love the. You just don't know. You don't know. You don't know what He's done for me. He gave me. Victor, oh, and that's why I, oh, I love you, Lord. I do you love the Lord, and I really, I really, really, I really love, I really love that you just don't know, you don't know, you don't know what He's done for me on Calvary. Oh, and that's why I, oh, I love you, Lord. I, do you love the Lord? Said I, I really, I really, really, I really love, I really love you. You just don't know, you don't know, you don't know what is on Calvary he gave me victory oh and that's why I, oh I love you Lord I, I love you Lord and I I really love the Lord. amen you may be seated do you love him this morning he, we love him because he first loved us. We ought to love him. Doesn't he love us? Has he been good to us? Has he been gracious unto us? He's been kind to us. He's been merciful to us. He has been forgiving to us. He's been loving to us. We thank God for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What a, what a time. What a time. Nothing can replace worshiping the Lord in spirit and in truth. I'm telling you, it's a good time. It's a blessed time. It's our, our, our rejuvenation time. It is that time that we honor the King of glory. We set aside our own situations and our lives and the things that we have going in order to give him all the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanks. Today is the first day of the week. This is the Lord's day. And this is that day. He deserves all the praise every day. But this is that day. He has called us together uh, to serve him and to worship him. But even now, the devil is trying to distract someone. Even now, the devil is trying to make you think about some other situations that are going on. But you have to prepare your hearts and minds for worship. We have to sanctify our minds and, and prepare our minds to focus on the Lord. We thank God for the, the songs of Zion lifted up in the name of King Jesus for the scripture reading and the prayers that have been offered up uh, according to God's holy and divine will. We're thankful for our guests, our visitors, our friends. The Lord in his infinite wisdom has navigated your travels and bless you to come and to be here to hear. Is there any word from the Lord? There is a word from the Lord, even in 2019, there's a word from the Lord, uh, even as there's so many words uh, being uh, spread uh, uh, from uh, somewhere uh, close to Maryland uh, on Twitter. There's a word uh, from the Lord. Okay, Washington, D.C., I'm just going to come out and tell you. Uh, but even though that there are many words being spread and shared and, and talked about uh, from D.C., our, our king is not in D.C., our king is in heaven, and our, our citizenship is in heaven. And I pr thank God for the Independence Day, uh, my Independence Day, uh, October 31st. Yeah, yeah, October 31st, 1993. I was set free. I was made independent. I was set free from sin, uh, from the devil, and obeyed the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And if you're here today and you need some independence, if you need some red, you can get some red and get right here in the pool. You can 
uh, get red uh, you, because the blood is in the water. You can't see it, but the blood of Jesus Christ will wash away, will cleanse all your sins. You can have uh, your white robe uh, on reserve if you come and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, according to Re Revelation chapter 7. And you can, uh, blue uh, is the significance of grace. You can receive the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ by hearing the death, burial, and resurrection, believing the same, repenting of your sins, confessing Jesus to be the Son of God, and being baptized for the remission of your sin through hearing, believing, repenting, confessing, and baptism. Through baptism, Mark 16, 15, and 16, Jesus the Savior adds the saved to the church. At any point in time you like to come, and obey the gospel. We would love for you to come. We'll stop what we are doing and, uh, and help you and uh, baptize you into Christ. Where you go down into the water, rise to walk in newness of life, uh, and your sins will be washed away. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5 is the text. Philippians 2, verses 1 through 5. We give the Lord all the glory, the honor, the praise, and the thanks uh, for his kindness, for his grace and mercy. Uh, so many we are thankful to see today and, and in the house. Uh, um, I, I was glad I saw Sister Temple in the house. Sister Temple is here. Let's give her a love deposit. We thank God for her and Brother Temple. Amen. I think I saw Sister Jerry. I think I saw Sister Jerry Campbell. I don't know. I think I saw. I, I, I think let's, let's give her a love deposit as well. And Good to see the Lees from Bahrain. They're, they're in the house today. The Lee family, uh, Derek and Lillian and their family are here. And uh, uh, so many others. We could go on and on. But we're just thankful to see you uh, in the Lord's house this morning. And uh, we, we want to uh, appreciate, and I, I was reminded about our, our youth for our youth conference. Uh, they did such an amazing job, uh, and we thank God for them and the parents that work with us uh, for the kids to attend uh, the youth conference. We appreciate all those who went uh, to the event, Philippians 2, 1 through 5. Wait for me. I'm coming there, uh, but uh, I better get this in because we got a lot today, and we're going to be short. This is going to be short today. I'm just giving you a microwave today. We're not, uh, we can't crock pot this one today. Uh, but uh, for the youth conference, we're thankful for uh, high school Bible Bowl, third place, middle school Bible Bowl, third place. Uh, G let's give them a hand. And uh, Jaden Session, third place in the spoken word. Uh, and Elise Gibson, third place in the How Great Thou Art competition. And Christian Tompkins, third place with the uh, How Great Thou Art competition as well. Uh, uh, let's give them a hand. Amen. Amen. Isis Parker was honored as a senior grad. Uh, we're glad for her. Let's give her a hand. And, and, and uh, so many others, so many others we could say we're thankful for their hard work and their labor. But we, we got them. We got them this year. They were telling us that they just study just the Bible, just study the Bible. They're, they're doing last the leaders, preacher. That's what they're doing. And I found out, too. They, they didn't want us to find out. But now that we know, oh, we're going to be ready for them next time. We're going to be ready. But uh, we, they really worked hard, did a tremendous job. And we are thankful for their efforts and the parents and all those who work with us. And uh, we want to meet with the brothers, of course, about last the leaders. But there is a word from the Lord this morning. We want to uh, go to Philippians chapter number two. Uh, Philippians uh, chapter number two, verses one through five. Uh, the Bible is right. The Bible is the word of God. Philippians two, uh, verses one through five. Uh, the Bible tells us, if there be any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if there are any bowels of mercies, Paul the Apostle said, fulfill ye my joy, that you be like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord, being of one mind. Paul said, let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of, of mind. He said, in lowliness of mind, esteem others better than themselves. Philippians 2 and verse 4, he says, 
Look not every man on his own things, but every man also on the things of others. Verse 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I want to uh, make a confession to Northside this morning. I want to make a confession to Northside this morning. I hope you still love me after I make my confession. Uh, I'm going to make my confession this morning, and my confession is I'm losing my mind. I am losing my mind. Let this mind be in you. You're going to catch up with me in just a moment. Which was also in Christ Jesus. I'm losing my mind. Some of you say, I already knew that about you, boy. <laughs> you don't have to say me that loud. Now, you don't have to... Uh, but last Sunday night, of course, we talked about have you lost your mind? We want to do this part two because this message, is, this scripture is so packed and powerful. Uh, and the uh, idea that Paul is getting across to us that we need to lose our own mind. Usually this statement is made in a negative sense. It's made in a sense of, of anger, upset, depression. Uh, and many times people uh, say that they're losing their minds. Uh, and we pray for those who are, the Bible talks about those who are feeble-minded. We should pray, we should serve, we should help. But I want to remind us what Paul is saying to us, that we should lose our minds and take on the mind of Christ. Don't lose your mind and have the devil's mind. Don't lose your mind and have a, a depressed mind. Don't lose your mind and have an angry mind because all of our actions start in our minds. Uh, but we should lose our mind. And I'm in the process of losing my mind. I hope you're in this process because this losing our mind is essential for us to make it to heaven. If you want to make it to heaven, if you want to see God's face in peace, you can't operate with your own mind. We must operate, Philippians 2 verse number 5, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I need the mind of Christ. You need the mind of Christ. But we want to remind us that it's a process. It takes some time. You don't get the mind of Christ just in one day. You don't get the mind of Christ just all at one time or one worship service a month, one worship service a year. We have to steadily and progressively. It's like boot camp. It's like going to uh, middle school, elementary school, middle school, high school. It takes some time to get that diploma. It takes some time to get that degree in college. But you have to lose, give up your mind and take on another mind. And in order to please God, we must have the mind of Christ. Problems are happening in your life because Jesus wants us to lose our minds and take on the mind of Christ. I'm so glad Job didn't operate with his mind when the devil attacked him. And notice, as you're serving God, the devil is still going to try to attack you. Has the devil been bothering anybody? If the devil hadn't been bothering you, I'm scared of you. If the devil hadn't been bothering you, I'm scared of you. That means you might be on his team. You might be wearing his color uniform if he hasn't been bothering you. But if he has, if he attacks you, that means you, you are trying to serve God. You're working to serve God, but the devil will come at you with some things. But I love, Job is my man. Job, uh, the Bible said, after all, we talked about that in the uh, uh, singles uh, uh, event Saturday, uh, Friday night. Had a good time. Had about 17 people there. Uh, they beat me, uh, uh, Carly beat me in Uno again. 
I tried to get my title back. She still beat me. She's still, she still the Uno champ. But we talked about having what kind of mind we should have, not our mind, but the mind of Christ. After Job lost all his money, lost all of his children, what a devastating situation, lost his health. Lost, uh, even his wife said, curse God and die. The Bible said, Job said, the Job said, naked came I out of my mother's womb. And naked shall I return. The Lord gives and the Lord take away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Job was not operating with his mind. He was operating with the mind of the Lord. He even said in Job 14, 14, I'm just going to wait until my change comes. He, that's, that's a godly mind. Am I right? He said, I, my situation looks like it's over. It looks like I'm out. It looks like it's hopeless, but I'm not operating with my mind. Job said, I'm losing. Get Job 42. Job 42. We come back to Philippians chapter 4. Job 42, verse number 5. Job said, I am losing my mind. It's a process. When you obey the gospel, you need to come and be baptized today. You need to become a Christian today. You need to be saved today. But your salvation process is not over after you get out of that pool. I think somebody can go along with me on that. I think I'm in the process. You're in the process. I'm a, I'm a work in progress. Uh, I'm losing my mind. Job said, uh, Job went through this process. He waiting on, waited on God, and the Lord changed his situation. Job 42, verse 5, I have heard thee. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now. But now. How many of you learned some things after you went through some situations and you could say, but now? <laughs> I thought I knew something then, but after I went through that last storm and Lord, you brought me through, I didn't know I could make it. I, I didn't know how good uh, God is. I knew he was good, but, but I go through something. I said, Lord, you just show enough good. You just good, 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 good. You just, uh, uh, you just, uh, you you, you just so, you are just so good. You Tony the Tiger, he's great. He's, he's, I've heard thee by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees thee. The Lord doesn't bring all these uh, uh, evil things, but I'm just saying sometimes he allows some things to come up in order that we will see him working. See him working. Verse 6, Job 42, verse number 6. I'm talking about losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Job had to lose it. I abhor myself, repent in dust and ashes. The next verse, next verse. We got to keep moving here. Uh, the Bible tells us, and it was so after the Lord spoke these words to Job. The Lord said to Eliphaz, the Temanite, my wrath is kindled against thee, against thy two friends, for you have not spoken of me the thing that is right as my servant Job had. Be careful when you look at somebody's situation and think you know what's going on and you can figure them out and I know what happened to you. I know you are not right. I know this and I know that. You don't know what you're talking about. Just say, Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy on them. Lord, have mercy on me. Verse number eight. We're almost uh, back to the uh, original text. Uh, Therefore, uh, take all the Lord told them, Job is going to have to pray for you. Be careful how you treat people when they're down. You might need them <laughs> one of these old days. I don't, uh, I'm not, uh, I want to, I appreciate how you treat uh, other folks, but my question to you is, how do you treat the people you think you don't need? Job had to pray for them. The Lord said, I'll accept Job's prayer, but not yours. Verse number nine, you didn't speak those things that were right as my servant Job did, and they did according to the Lord and uh, what the Lord's word. And the Bible said the Lord accepted Job's prayer. Verse 10. Verse 10. I'm losing my mind. Job grieved. Job suffered. But he held on to the Lord's mind, not his mind. And the Lord turned. That's what I was trying to get to. The Lord turned. 
the captivity. Don't worry if you're in captivity right now. Don't worry if you're stuck in the middle of a situation right now. The Lord knows how to turn that thing. Have you ever been in something that you couldn't turn and you're asking God to turn it? When God gets ready, he'll turn it. But don't try to get out of it with your mind, with your plan, with your uh, intelligence. Adopt the mind of Christ. The Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. We're coming to that because we have to humble ourselves. And also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Back to Philippians chapter 2. He gave him double for his trouble. Job had to go through that. He was losing his mind, but he adopted the Lord's mind. We must lose our minds and adopt the mind of Christ. Here in the book of Philippians, the church, this is Paul writing to the church of Christ at Philippi. The people there were serving God under tremendous struggle, but the people were divided. The people, or the church there was full of people that had their own interests. And therefore, the main focus of the church being saving souls and helping souls to stay saved was not at the forefront of most people's minds. And Paul said, you got to make sure that you lose your mind, Al Jackson. Lose your mind, brothers and sisters in Christ, because we could be doing a lot of other things, but we need to get back to the main focus that Christ has for us. Philippians 2 and verse 1. If there be any consolation in Christ. I need to read here. We need to read here. Uh, Brother Howard, you got it. We need to get back to having the mind of Christ. Uh, my, uh, my mind might say to go and buy some lottery tickets. To get out of this situation. What, what's your number? Somebody give me your lucky numbers. Give me your. Somebody almost said something. They almost. You forgot where you were just for a few seconds. You, you forgot where you were. Uh-uh. No, no. That, that's not how you get out of trouble and problems. Make sure that you put Christ first. The Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And everything you need will be added unto you. My mind says I can't take any more of the world's foolishness. But the mind of Christ says I can do all things through Christ, which gives me the strength. The strength. He strengthens me. I don't strengthen myself. My mind says uh, to leave these folks or to lie, cheat, and steal. But the Lord's mind says be faithful unto death and I'll give you the crown of life. But the problem in Philippi is that they had a selfish mindset. I don't want to be involved in that ministry in the church unless it benefits me. Unless it's all about me. Unless I get something out of it. Unless, uh, you know, is it, if Paul said you got the wrong kind of mind, you better lose your mind and adopt the mind of Christ. Look at what he says here. Read on, my brother. If there be therefore any consolation in Christ. Yes, sir. If any comfort of love. Yes. If any fellowship of the Spirit. Fellowship of the Spirit. If any vows and mercies. Vows of mercies. Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye my joy. That ye be like-minded. Be like-minded. He's talking about the mind. Let your, look, get rid of your mindset and adopt the mind of Christ. Come on, sir. Having the same love. Having the same love. Christ Jesus loved us. We should love one another. We should love the lost. We should love though with one another with the love of Christ. Read on, my brother. Being of one accord. Being of one accord. Of one mind. Oh, he's talking about that mind. One accord, one mind. Any organization can't go very far if the participants have different agendas. Different agendas. Kevin Durant. He left. He left what team? Golden State. Where is he at now? Brooklyn. Down there with the Nets. Because it was about one thing for him, and it's about another thing for Steph. 
that, all, that's all right in basketball, but in the Lord's church, we need to stop dividing because trying to, who's the top dog? Who get the most press? They didn't mention my name. All I want is Jesus to know my name. <laughs> you don't have to call my name. <laughs> I've, been, I've been a Christian, a child of God, now about 25 years, uh, maybe uh, almost 26. I never needed my name. I just want to serve, to serve. I can be in the back. I can be uh, invisible. Uh, I just want to serve. And every child of God, and there are many here who just want to serve. And it's encouraging and it's motivating uh, when you have uh, folk work with folks that want to serve. It's motivating to work with a senior minister. Thank God all he wants to do is serve people. Brother and sister McClendon, they serve, they serve, they serve. We need to serve. We thank God for our elders. They serve, they serve them and their families. They just serve and serve and serve. What about us? Thank God for our deacons and our ministry leaders. They serve so many things that they do. You don't even see, but it gets done. Serve, serve, serve. So many sisters, so many brothers serve, but they're awesome folks. It's just the law averages. The preacher said Jesus had 12 and one of them was a devil. So every one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, I'll be 12. I'll be 12. I'll be 12. Whoever number 12, y'all are getting mad. Y'all are getting mad. I don't know. I don't know. And not for me to judge, but, but the devil uh, will make sure that he has some representation up in this church. The Lord in heaven, we talked about it in our Singles Fellowship Friday night. Uh, the Lord in heaven called it in Job chapter 1, he called a staff meeting, and the Lord took attendance, and the devil said, hey, what's up? I'm here. What's up, y'all? You ain't having no meeting without me. The devil has somebody in here thinking about themselves. Somebody said, just too hot up in here. Why don't they turn it down? Somebody said, it's too cold up in here. <laughs> Why don't they turn that air up? Somebody said, well, the, the, my stone leader didn't sing. <laughs> uh, my stone leader, Bray, you did great man Matthew you did great but on the second verse in the third in the first stanza you didn't hit it just <laughs> shut up <laughs> you need to lose your mind Matthew, well, he did it now, but when he was on the voice, he just sang a little better than this. Shut your mouth. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, come and give their all. And, and when you stand in front of people, you are vulnerable. We become vulnerable to your attacks because you could always do it better than us. I know. I know you're just pristine and precious and you got it all together. You know everything. But for some reason, God chose us to do what we are doing. So it's time for you to lose your mind and get busy in service. To the king of glory. Paul said there's too much strife. There's just too much. There's too many camps down there in Philippi. There's, there's too many. I like this and I don't like that. Uh, but thanks be to God for the membership of Northside and the leadership. It, the Lord wants us to stick together and work together. Philippians 2 and verse number 3. Let nothing. Read on my brother. Let nothing be done yes. through strife or vain glory. Strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind. Lowliness of mind. Let each esteem Let others each esteem others. Better than themselves. Better. Better than themselves. Esteem others better than yourself. Read on, my brother. Let not every man on his own things. Don't look on your own things. 
but every man also on the things of others. Every man should look, every man, woman, boy, girl, should look to help others in the way that they need help. Read on. Let this mind be in you, which yes. was also in Christ Jesus. He's talking about a humble mind. Now he's going to give Jesus, he's going to give Jesus qualifications. And then he give his mindset. Because some of us, we can't get past our qualifications. Some, 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 uh, I went down to the youth conference and uh, just speaking to brothers uh, and, and sisters, uh, I don't have to tell you who I am. Who I am is not important. But, but sometimes some people, men, women, sometimes, it doesn't matter. Men, women, some, sometimes meet, hey, brother, how you doing? I am brother so-and-so. I'm the minister senior of the, of the Arizona Fellowship Church of the Living. And, and, and some, some people, uh, uh, they're not in the Lord's Church. They, the church name is so long, and the preacher name title is so long, uh, they, you can't even fit it on the business card. Who I who and who and after they get done telling me who he is and his title and all that and they ask me who I am, I'm Al. <laughs> That's who I am. <laughs> Let nothing, because I found out when you humble yourself, the Lord exalts you. And see when people pick you up. They can knock you down. You'll be on top today. And they'll run you down. They'll, they'll have your, your spiritual funeral tomorrow. They'll bury you. They'll put you down a six feet, eight feet deep. But if you don't pick me up, you can't knock me down, baby. When Jesus lift me up, nobody can knock me down. I don't need to fight. I don't need to fuss. I don't need to... Uh, promote my Jesus. Jesus. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus and to our youth and young adults. You should want to be somebody. You should uh, go forth and achieve all you can achieve. Get, get all you can and can all you get. Go out there and, and be, be and, and you've got all the gifts and talents and abilities anybody else have. Work hard. Go for what you know but keep God first. Keep God first because what mama don't see and daddy don't see, Jesus sees it. I learned that the hard way. I could tell you some stories too. Let this mind be you which was also in Christ Jesus. I got to move. Uh, what, what does next verse say? Who being in the form of God. Who being in the form of God. Thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He was in the, he was in the morphe of God. He was in the form of God. Look at his qualifications. What's your qualification, Jesus? God. That's higher than your degree. That's higher than my degree, my, where I went to school, where you went to school, and, and, and who you think you are, and the title you earned, and that, you know, that, that whatever you got, or uh, whatever you have is higher. God thought it not robbery to be equal with God. It doesn't mean anything about robbing. It means that he was equal with God and see in Isaiah 14 and Genesis and Isaiah 14 talks about the devil wanting to be on the throne with God and he wanted to rob the throne but Jesus didn't have to rob nothing he was just on it he's on the throne but he gave up the throne Thought it not Robert to be equal with God, but read, brother. But made himself of no reputation. Made himself of no reputation. And took and upon him the form of a servant. This is this is he he took upon him. He he the form of God means he's God. He was in the form of God. Not only his inner uh, dwelling. But his outward glorious expression. The angels saw he was God. But he saw us in trouble. And he said I got to go down. I love them so much. I'm going to go down there and help them. But I can't go down there and help them. In this glorious expression. Because no man can see God. 
face and live. Moses asked to see, Lord, I just want to see your glory. And the Lord said, Moses, you can't see my glory, my face, and live. So the Lord put Moses, some of y'all know the scripture here. Uh, the Lord put Moses in the cleft of the rock. And the Lord said, I'll just pass by. That's the closest you can get. And he passed by, covered it up. And when he passed by, the Bible said Moses saw his back parts. And, and, <laughs> but you can't see his face and live. Jesus said, so I have to, I want to come down and help them. Uh, but made of himself no reputation. What did it say, my brother? And took upon him the form of a servant. He took upon him. This is the incarnation of Jesus. Y'all can't see my glorious, rep, my glory, my representation. So I got to put on a body. He came looking like any one of us. And the Bible said there was no beauty in him that we should desire him. You know, if I was up there and I was going to come down, boy. <laughs> <laughs> boom, 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 boom. How y'all doing? Boom! <laughs> Get me some packs, preacher. Get me some muscles and, 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 and decrease some waist and some... Uh... <laughs> but he came down looking like a regular person. Took upon him the form, the kenosis of a servant. He looked like a regular man, but he was not a regular man. God that created the universe took upon him the form of a servant. A servant. And was what? And was made in the likeness of men. Made in likeness of men. Come on, read, sir. And being found in the fashion as a man. Found in fashion as a man. He humbled himself. He humbled himself. And became obedient unto death. He became obedient to death. Even the death of a cross. Not just death, but the death of the cross. The most excruciating, painful death one could die. He humbled himself and went through that to serve you and me. Now, if he can go be higher than any of us, and go lower than all of us, we can humble ourselves and serve too. I can give you about 45 minutes about Jesus, but that's, but the crux of the text is saying since Jesus served, we can serve too. And he served people that couldn't stand him. So if he served people that couldn't stand him, sir, a servant, a, a servant, a servant. A servant, a servant, may I take your order? Servant, at your, at your favorite restaurant, what you like, bro? Give me a two-piece special. Two-piece special. <laughs> <laughs> your favorite restaurant. Two-piece. Dog meat, dog meat. Dog meat, dog meat. Yeah, yeah, dog. Would you, would you like a biscuit with that? Yes, sir. <laughs> would you like a water or a lemonade? Yes, sir, thank you. <laughs> I'm served. I got his order. I go back. We're at the restaurant now. He, He's seated in the restaurant. I'm serving him. I'm serving. And I keep going back and I keep coming back. And I keep checking on him. You know, this is like a zone situation. Like the zone fellowship, the zone uh, ministry. You know, I'm checking on him. The sick people, you know, I'm checking on him. Can I serve you? Can I serve? And I go back. And it's, it's like the youth ministry. I'm checking on the, the youth. And I'm... I'm I'm not waiting on brother so and sister so I'm I'm checking I'm helping I'm serving uh, it's 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 like the the the, the music ministry I'm, I'm I'm helping I may not be able to sing but I can bring some food while they come and practice uh, I can do something to help them 
uh, because they're putting in the time. Teach you, you, I, I can't have your gift, and maybe you don't have mine, but we can work together to serve, to serve. You know, maybe with the single ministry, maybe I can help, maybe I can serve. But when it's about me, I ain't got no time for that. And you wonder why you are where you are. We've got to look at, we've got to keep, continue to lose our minds. Marriage ministry, youth ministry, singles, uh, the prison ministry, uh, the, the, the stars ministry, whatever the ministry is, serving, serving, zone ministry. But most of all, looking to save some souls and help some souls to stay saved. Boy, at Sunday school over 11.02 a.m., it could be 10 people want to be saved. I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> Eyes hungry. <laughs> but when you have the mind of Christ, how can I serve you? How can I help you? I know what you want. I know you, you like that biscuit with some extra butter on it. You want some. Um, uh, but that may be what you want. But salvation is what you need. Can we serve what the person needs. God is thanks be to God. Uh, we, we have leadership that, that is interested in the salvation of people's souls. And, and uh, uh, over the last 20 baptisms that I've been involved in uh, over, the, over the past a few uh, 12 months, uh, the one that sticks out, they're all special, they're all special. But one that sticks out, this uh, older gentleman put him down in the water, came up out of the water, and the man was crying. The man was shedding tears. The man was shedding tears. And knowing the man's situation, I know his situation. I talked to class. He didn't, doesn't have a place to stay. Doesn't have a car. Doesn't have a wife. But he said, I got Jesus now. And I said, if this man can be grateful that he has Jesus, and all he has is Jesus. What am I complaining about? But see, when you put on your, uh, your towel, when you drop your title and pick up your towel, Jesus came down. He was not emphasizing his title. He took on a towel and served. And if he served, we can serve. Being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient. God became obedient. This, this, and humble, this phrase means a mountain that's no higher than the ground. That's the word picture. Even the death of the cross. Read on, my brother. Come on. Wherefore, God also hath exalted, God. exalted him. God, because he humbled himself, the Lord of heaven has highly exalted him and, and given him a name, given him a name, which is above every name, which is above every name. He humbled himself and the Lord lifted him up. Jesus emptied himself and took upon him the form of a servant. So with all your titles. Brothers and sisters in Christ, and a lot of us in here have a lot of titles, and that's wonderful. You need to get out there and be as successful as you possibly can. The problem is not the possession of titles. The only problems come in when your titles stop you from picking up towels. I can't pick up no towel, Brother McClendon. Don't you know my title? Don't you know who I is at FSCJ? <laughs> Are you NF? Don't you know who I, I'm sorry, who I am? Have all the titles you want. That's, awesome. That's wonderful. But never drop your towel. John 13, you know the scripture. Jesus. All the disciples were fussing and arguing who was the greatest. The Lord and Savior picked up the towel. And he washed all of their feet. He washed each dirty, stinking 
footsies. He washed them all. And they didn't have on Stacey Adams. They didn't have red bottom. Uh, they didn't have that. They had sandals. Dirt. And Jesus took off the sandals. Washing the feet. They were all amazed. Lord. And he got to Peter. Peter said, Lord, you, you, you can't wash my feet. In John 13. In verse number 8. Peter said, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus said, if I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. In verse 9, Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only. <laughs> Give me a bath. <laughs> Give me a jacuzzi bath right up in here. Now then, my uh, hands and my head, I need, wash me. All over. Wash me all over. Verse 15. Verse 15. I got to shut it down. I'm, I'm, I don't want to get over time. I got John 13. Verse 15. Uh, Jesus taught them a lesson. For I have given you an example. That you should do. As I have done to you. What are you doing that doesn't directly help you? That's when the Lord comes in and blesses you. For your good works. John 13 and verse 11. For he knew not who should betray him. Therefore, or Jesus knew who should betray him. Therefore, he said, you are not all clean. I'm washing some feet. And all of them aren't clean. A lot of us will serve, but it better be the people we like. I serve cool. I serve cool, man. I serve cool. But, but this brother right here, I don't like this brother. Paul Cook. You don't know how God might use Cook to bless. You, you don't know. And it doesn't matter. Jesus served everybody. We should serve everybody. I'm losing my mind. I'm in the process. I haven't made it yet. I haven't made it yet. Some things some people do. I still start twitching and I have to go off to the corner and pray. Lord, help me that my mind doesn't come back. I want to operate with the mind of Christ. You need to operate with the mind of Christ. Peter said, 2 Peter 1, 5 through 11. Just read it later on. He said, add to your faith, virtue, knowledge, temperance, patience. Godliness, brotherly kindness, charity. He said, if these things be in you, they'll make you that you shall never fall. Lose your mind. When you start trying to serve the Lord, the devil will send some people your way. I got to say this for, the, for our, our young people. Now, the devil send old, uh, uh, bad people, older people's way too. But, but, but I want to say this uh, as well. I got to get you ready for Lion King. Anybody ever heard of Lion King? Uh, but, but you, we have a lot of symbols out here. You have a destiny. You have a destiny. But if you're not careful, the devil will use some scars to try to <laughs> deter you from your destiny. And if you are not careful, you can end up out hanging out with Timon and Pumbaa. That's Pookie and Ray Ray, y'all. That's. And what you should be doing, you should be serving, you should be working, you should be working on that degree, you should be working, uh, climbing the ladder in, uh, in that business and keeping God first. But Timon and Pumbaa will tell you, Akuna Matata is us. It's all good. But when you lose your mind and get back to the mind of Christ, you will see that God has many more things for you if you will keep him first. So much more we want to say, but at, a, at another time. Are you losing your mind? Your mind can keep you from heaven. My mind can keep me from heaven. 
One of the things I'm so afraid of, Proverbs 14, 12, there is a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. Matthew 7, 21 to 23, Jesus said, not everyone that says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my father. What started me off studying the word of God, Brother McClendon, I was baptized, got out of the water. My family didn't, or my family were not in the church. Uh, we didn't know anything about church. But when somebody showed me that verse, all I thought about was getting to the judgment, thinking I'm going on in the glory. And the Lord saying, depart from me. I never knew you. I said, oh, no. So I set out to study the word of God, reading it, studying it, and attending the worship service and the Bible classes in the Church of Christ. I didn't set out to become a preacher. I just wanted to know what God's word said for me. I had to lose my mind. I advise you to do the same. But if you're not a Christian, you need to come right now and be baptized, be saved. Have your soul saved. You don't have to know everything. You don't have to have all the information, but you know that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And there are many people saying he's not, but let me tell you something. He has proven himself biblically in history, and no, the, the historians cannot deny that he lived. The Jews who don't even believe in him, they know he lived. They know he, he, he was alive. He was a man. He is true. He is right. And even those that don't uh, uh, agree with him, they cannot disprove his existence and they can't disprove the Bible. You need to come right now. Having heard the death, burial, and resurrection, believe this message with all your heart. Repent. Of your sins. Luke 13, verse 3 and 5. Confess Jesus to be God's Son and be baptized, buried, immersed in water for the remission of your sins. The Bible teaches us that we must be baptized for the remission of sins in order to become a Christian. And then the Lord implants in the watery grave of baptism, your sins are washed away. To this day, that's still the greatest day of my life when I was baptized for the remission of sins. And you know what? The Lord. He turned my whole life around that day. He can do the same for you. He can do the same for you. In the water grave of baptism, your sins are washed away. The blood of Jesus cleanses you. And the Holy, the Lord implants the Holy Spirit into your heart. But the Holy Spirit needs the word. And the word needs the Holy Spirit. You know how some people have doctorates in Bible and don't understand the Bible? They don't have the Holy Spirit. And some people have, uh, have been baptized into Christ, but don't study the Bible and don't know what they should know. We need to read and study the word of God. It goes together in the church of Christ. If you need to be baptized, come. If you need to make confession, come. If you stand in need of prayer, come. If you just would like a Bible study for us to talk with you about what you must do to be saved, I'm telling you, the Lord will help us if we will let this mind be in us which was also in Christ Jesus. Come while we stand and sing a song of encouragement. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. It's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me. Yes, it's me, oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Well, it is me. Yes, it's me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. Oh, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer. Well, it's not my mother, not my father, but it's me, oh Lord, I'm standing in the need of prayer.